Um, he's outside, he's ready, he's pumped, um, and he's going to be coming through right now when I introduce him. And he's going to MC, uh, well, he, he's not going to MC, but he's going to introduce the first act. Right, you ready to see him? Yes! Yeah, cool. <laughs> All right, so. No, it's not me, I promise you, it's another guy. Right, so. <laughs> I've never ever, ever in my life had this happen to me, so I don't know. Like, I'm used to hecklers, very good with it, but kids, you can't like, <laughs> next thing you know, I'm in the echo, and then someone's like, you know what I mean? So, that's why I got like really, I started sweating. I was like, like, if it was a black kid, I would have beaten him up. Like, I would have been like, good, shut up, hunt. My kid is white, I'm like, I don't know, go to your rooms. Anyway, all right, guys, we're gonna start the, we're gonna, we're gonna start the show, we're gonna start the show. Uh, he's a very good looking guy, a very brokeish kind of guy. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you from the back, start clapping and bring it forward for your uh, host for now-ish, for George. Stop, 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 stop clapping, stop clapping, stop clapping, stop clapping, stop clapping. George the Blacksmith! Thank you so much. Wow. That's what happens when you have a low budget. You can't afford an MC, so. <laughs> Guys, welcome to the show. Welcome to Brokeish. It is a story about a broke kid with rich intentions. But before I get to share, uh, you know, my story, before I get to share, share, share my story, what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce not you, not, not you, young man. Um, so I'm going to introduce a... Do you want to have a conversation over there, maybe? <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to introduce uh, the first act. Now, she is performing for the very first time. She is performing, honestly, doing comedy for the very first time. She runs an amazing entertainment agency. Really, really amazing. I'm pretty sure you've seen it somewhere, somehow. In fact, uh, she designed this for me. Don't you think it's amazing? Yeah? Uh, so I'm really excited for her. And she wanted uh, me to stand next to her or just, uh, you know, in case she collapses or anything, I'll, you know, carry it. But uh, I'm gonna stand on this side and, 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 and yeah, let's just show her some love. I think she's gonna be great. And I'm really excited to see what she's got for all of us. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Natalie Schumann! So obviously it's a bit nerve-wracking this whole situation and I've got, I've got notes, sorry, but <laughs> they, were, they were on my hand but then I decided to just make a paper note. I made these pants especially for you, George. <laughs> so, so basically, so basically, I met George um, at the Brass Bell a few years ago and uh, he was asking me for a job but I didn't realise he was talking to me. <laughs> so he started working for me, you know, like um, soon after high school, and I had to teach him a lot. So, you know, he be basically became my pupil. <laughs> so after, after you know, working together, we had a really good time. You know, we used to take the piss out of each other a lot while we were at um, work, and. Um, probably been working for me for about four four days and I got a phone call at oh dear that's my baby do you want to come stand by me okay he'd been basically working for me for about four days and I got a phone call at a half past eleven at night and he's like I'm at your house can I sleep the night? Oh, sorry, I know he doesn't talk like that. Can I sleep the night? And he, I was like, George, stop making a spectacle of yourself. Oh, babes, mommy's talking. <laughs> um, so, this continued to happen for quite a few times. So, a few years ago, we, we, we actually went to go watch a comedy show together, and uh, at the end of the show, there was uh, they were throwing out t-shirts to the audience, and I was like, my bro, go, go, you can catch two at the same time. <laughs> and obviously I 
I've just been like, you know, taking the piss out of him a, a, a lot. So he's been actually staying with me for the last, uh, like, two weeks. And um, he's... <laughs> talk, talk. He's... Uh, Oh, you're not bigger, sorry. Just George, sorry guys, sorry about this, sorry. So, so he's been, you know, he's been staying with me for the last two weeks and, you know, he's been pretty helpful. I do have to tell him what to do all the time, but, you know, the rest of the time, he's literally listening to me. <laughs> he literally just spends the rest of his time listening to our tunes. <laughs> My toddler, this is my toddler, obviously the whole week he's been nagging me, he's like, please, 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 can you go to the park, can you go to the park? I'm like, I'm so busy, I've got so much going on, I, I don't have, uh, I, so George is like, I can take him to the park. So I was like, cool, then you'll have some supervision. <laughs> <laughs> and I gave them some money so they could buy some ice cream. <laughs> And then today, we're driving around, we're driving around today, and I'm like, I've got so much going on, George doesn't know how to drive, I'm driving, and I'm like checking my cell phone, and he's like glaring at me, and then I remember my mom used to say like, you know, keep an eye on the road, like George would nail that shit. <laughs> <laughs> and the other night, we're watching TV, and George is like, there's all these hot Australian chicks on the TV, George is like, ooh. I want to go live in Australia. And I'm like, yo, my baby, go chat up two chicks at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> so, we mean, so we also own a fancy dress shop in Museburg if you ever need fancy dress costumes, we have the best costumes ever. And I keep trying to get George to do a fancy dress to like event or party, you know what I mean? Like he could go as a sailor or a pirate and we could be like, oh, yo, captain. <laughs> Sorry, my brie. Uh, I know my jokes are bad, but this is how I roll. <laughs> they just get cornier and cornier. <laughs> just don't lash out at me, my brie. <laughs> you know, when you're a comedian, you gotta be a little bit smart, you know what I'm saying? You gotta have like a high IQ. <laughs> um, after a while, you know, we did. <laughs> After a while, he stopped working for me because we basically couldn't see eye to eye. I told him he could go and get a job with Apple, you know, iPad, iMac, iPhone, you know. And if that doesn't work, try the cinema, my blue iMacs. I was actually quite surprised with the amount of people that actually came to the show because George's phone broke, like, you know, like a few days ago, and he lost all his contacts. <laughs> So, the last thing I'm going to say, I don't know if you, I hope you all saw his poster, you know, his poster for the show. He's got a photo of George pulling a face like, and, and, and it's, it's brokish. So any, you know, any normal person would look at the poster and be like, yeah, brokish, he's brokish, that's why he's pulling that face. But actually, he's trying so hard not to be squint that that's how he's pulling the face. <laughs> like an optical illusion. Anyway, that's it, sorry. Oh. Matt, you sure everybody, for your first time, I think that was good. I think it was good.